I'm Isaac. Uh, I'm one. Of, I'm CTO and co-founder at Owen Labs, and you know, uh, uh, I'll be telling you today about um, our project Coda, which you know I think it's pretty cool, and you'll you'll learn something. So and just to echo what you all were saying, you know, whenever you know, whenever there's some change of power, you want you want to try and make sure it's equitably distributed. So, what is Coda? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, it's a new cryptocurrency protocol. And it's, what's cool about it is the first cryptocurrency that has what we call a succinct blockchain. So what does it mean succinct? Well, it, it means instead of being hundreds of hundreds of gigabytes, which you know, would be kind of the normal situation with a blockchain, uh, you can kind of compress the whole blockchain down to the size of a few tweets. So like, uh, you know, some kilobytes. It's cool because it means that you can scale to large numbers of transactions being uh, processed without you know, accumulating this huge glut of data right, that, that needs to then be checked. Okay. So uh, in fact, it's so uh, easy to check that you can check it on a mobile phone or even in a web browser, which I have a, a demo on my computer doing that, just that. <laughs> so um, and, and soon it will be on other people's computers too, like next week. OK. So let's uh, motivate the discussion a little bit and, and say something about um, what cryptocurrencies look like today. So OK, this is a cryptocurrency. This is you. You're checking the cryptocurrency. Um, this is a blockchain. OK, in the beginning, oh. <laughs> So in the beginning, it's not so bad, right? Like there's two blocks. You're like, okay, I can I can do this. This is like a megabyte, whatever. I'm gonna check it. And at the end, you're like, yep, looks good to me. You're ready to go. Spend your your cyber coins. But then you know, a few years pass, right? And now maybe transactions are being are happening at a faster rate. And soon, uh, there's an, this insanely long chain that's gigabytes and gigabytes, and you're not gonna check that, okay? And in fact, uh, well, you know, you could try. You, you could make your way down this, this super long chain. But you know, at the end, probably you're going to wish you'd done something else with your life because you're, you're going to be like, uh, you're going to be old. So what's kind of the problem, the problem that we're pointing at here? The problem is that as a result of this kind of sort of in retrospect, really ridiculous verification mechanism of like, you have to check the entire transaction history, most end users do no validation whatsoever. Why? Because actually checking, actually doing this validation is very resource intensive. And, it's only getting worse, especially as you know, we want to scale uh, usage of, of these systems. Right now, it's super computationally intensive to run this on a computer. Um, and basically, you know, it is impossible to run it on a mobile phone. What's the fundamental issue? Well, we need some way to kind of be convinced that the current state of the world is what it is. You know, I have such and such money. You sent me this payment without actually having to see the history of, of that state, as you have to now. It turns out there's an amazing technology that lets you do just this. It's called ZK, a ZK snark. Okay, so what is a ZK snark? It's kind of, it's a kind of unforgeable certificate, of something. So let's uh, understand a little better. As I said, it's an amazing cryptographic primitive. Really, if you take away nothing else from from this whole evening, I recommend that you Google this. It's really quite amazing. It, it, it we'll see. So uh, there are some kind of certificate that lets you prove that a computation was performed correctly. And what's cool about them? Well, they're very small, so they're like less than a kilobyte. That's that's tiny. You know, that's like a, what's a kilobyte? Ten tweets. Okay, so uh, they're very easy to check. You can check them in in ten-ish milliseconds. I mean, it depends, of course, if you're if you're using my OCaml implementation or the C++. But uh, they're it's uh, they're very versatile, so you can use them to certify, you know, that you ran any computation correctly, and they're tiny and easy to check, no matter how complicated the, the computation in question is. So you do a computation for, uh, for 1,000 years. Okay? Or let's say I, I went, in, went over here and did a computation for 1,000 years. Okay? 1,000 years. And at the end, I could come to you and show you. And, and let's say at the end I got you know, 117 was the answer. Okay? Let's say. And then I could come to you and I could say, hey, I ran, I ran my program. And guess what? I got 117 as, as the answer. And I could just give you this little snark, this little ZK snark. And it would be convincing to you that, in fact, 117 was the answer. Even though you didn't spend a thousand years, you spent ten milliseconds. Okay, so it, it's it's quite amazing and almost unbelievable from from that perspective. But in fact, it's be, believe it because it's real. <laughs> so, um, and you you know, uh, if you don't believe me, well, you can Google it and there's papers and stuff. So, um, <laughs> I mean, why do we believe these things? I don't know, right? There's papers. You can read the papers. You, you're someone you trust read the papers, or there's an institution that you trust that certified the papers. Anyway, so. <laughs> So OK, that's a really cool thing. Well, how can we use it to solve this problem of blockchain scalability? And this is, in fact, how it's used in Coda. 
updating or verifying a blockchain, that's just some kind of computation. Snarks, we just learned, can certify any computation. So OK, uh, you have the, the people who are producing blocks in the system also produce these snarks that they're verifying their blocks correctly, OK? Or processing their blocks correctly. And then instead of having to check the blockchain for yourself and download all that data, you just download this little proof which says, yeah, there was a blockchain, and if you had checked it, you would believe it. OK? Does it make sense? And right, so this t certificate is a snark, and it's tiny and easy to check, so we're in business. I just send you my few kilobytes, you take your 10 milliseconds, and uh, you're good to go. Right, so you got a, a totally full level of security, but only downloading a few kilobytes. So that's pretty cool. Just to give a, a little illustration, there's this cool technique that DeepThe will uh, you know, spend, spend a lot more time talking about. Um, but just to give you a kind of a, a, an idea of how, of one cool thing that you can do with snarks uh, in order to get this sort of fully, fully succinct property. So who heard about snarks before? Anyone? Oh, really? Wow. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't blow anyone's mind then. Okay. So, well, <laughs> that's too bad, I guess. But I mean, maybe a few people, it, it was a new concept. So, um, well, then you might know that with a snark, you can only certify sort of a fixed size computation. So you have to sort of say at the beginning of time, ah, yes, I would like to run a comp computation for 15 steps, and I'm going to certify computations of the, only that size. This is sort of natively what you can do with snarks, OK? But verifying a blockchain, it's not a computation that only has 15 steps or any fixed number of steps, OK? Right? It, the blockchain could be uh, however long, right? It could be arbitrarily long. You don't know. So. There's this amazing technique that lets you sort of chain proofs together so that uh, though each, in each proof you're sort of doing a fixed amount of computation, you can sort of chain them together to do an arbitrarily long computation. Okay? This is called recursive composition. And just to kind of give you a, an idea of how it works uh, in, in Coda, and deeply, which deeply we'll talk more about, uh, let's say you have a, a snark which sort of certifies, oh yeah, if you, you can update the blockchain to get from state 0 to state 1. And another one which says you can update the blockchain. Oh. So let's say you have uh, you did a computation and you know and produced a proof that you could get from state zero to state one, okay? And then you made another one. The next person you know made a proof that said, yeah, if you compute on state one and you'll go one step to state two with one block. This whole process of checking the two snarks, that's a computation. Snarks can certify any computation, okay? So you can make a snark that stands in for this whole process, OK? And connects these two proofs together to get one gigantic proof. But it's not gigantic. It's still just a kilobyte that says you can go from, from 0 to 2, OK? So that's uh, this idea of recursive composition of proofs. You can chain these little proofs, each of which is a fixed size, together to get one proof that stands in for an arbitrarily long computation. So that's quite amazing. It's like when you check it, you're like checking these two people. And each of them checked you know, their subparts of the computation. So it's sort of like, it's sort of like a company, almost, <laughs> no. you know, with hierarchical, it's like a hierarchical power structure. OK, anyway. So uh, anyway, and, and you do the same thing, right? So you can get from 0 to 2, you can get from 2 to 4, and so you can go from 2 to 4. And you know, you're checking these two, and they're checking these two. Each of them is checking two people, and each of them is checking two, two computations, so on. So, um, that's a flavor of, of kind of how it works. And you know, what does it look like for the end user? Well, you know, they just download this, this roughly one kilobyte snark, which says uh, you, can, you can get to the current state from the initial state. Uh, and they download you know, what's, if people know about Merkle trees. Who knows? All right. Um, they download, like, uh, this is really not, a, not the whole state, but it's just the hash. And you download a Merkle path in, into your account. Uh, uh, and you can be convinced that you have $17 without having to download even, you know, even a, a megabyte. So yeah, so the upshot of, of all this is that it's a lot, in terms of verification, it's much more decentralized than, than other cryptocurrency protocols. Okay, So in, you don't have to delegate verification to someone else. Well, you, don't, you do delegate verification in some sense to someone else, but you do it in a provable way instead of, instead of just trusting them. Okay. Um, so the upshot is you, you, anyone can verify. You don't have to just you know, trust Coinbase wallet or whatever. Yeah, so OK, so that's Coda. Uh, I'm, I'm Isaac again. It's you know, the Twitter. And um, that's our website and stuff. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>